Hey, thanks for checking out the channel, and welcome to Lord of the Rings Rise of the War. There's a lot to learn when you get into this game, and I want to help guide you on your first steps. Today I want to help you understand marching and legal tiles better, move range, forts and repositioning, march speed, battle reports, and a little tile management. Having a good handle on these elements should allow you to hit the ground running, so let's dive right in. When you start the game, chances are you're going to see purple tiles somewhere near your base. These are tiles owned by other players in your faction, not enemies. Once you join a fellowship or a warband, you're also going to see blue tiles. These are owned by other members of your fellowship or warband and are also not enemies. You can march on tiles adjacent to either of these colors, just as you would your own green tiles. This really helps to expand and reach tiles you might have to spend time pathing to. Just a quick note here on Betrayal. Because we use each other's tiles to help expand in that way, there's really no reason to betray each other. There was a recent change made so that we can't attack settlements of betrayed targets anyway, so you can't get resources from inactives or anything like that. So, really my best advice would just be not to betray anyone. It doesn't really help. Now let's talk about move range. A lot of people get confused as to how they expand out farther than the initial circle around their settlement. In order to do that, you need to reach ring level 10 and build forts. Each fort has its own movement range circle and should be placed as close to the edge of your current range as possible. So let's build one. Go to a tile that you own at the edge of your current range. Click the build option to the right. You'll see this screen which has a bar to rename your fort to make it easier to keep track of. Forts take 2 hours to complete, 12,000 gold, and some minimal resources which can be seen here. Click build and in 2 hours it'll be complete. So it's been 2 hours, you have a shiny new fort with a funny name, but that commander you moved there still can't march past it. You, my friend, need to learn the art of repositioning. Click your shiny new fort, click reposition to the right, and choose whichever commander you're using to path with. Once they arrive, you will see one of the empty portraits in the fort fill with that commander's picture, and they can now use the movement range of that fort. Now let's talk about march speed. Each troop has its own speed stat, higher the speed, the faster the march. That's basically how it breaks down. Mounted units are always faster than units going on foot, and there are certain commanders that have a higher speed stat than others as well. These commanders and troops usually make for better pathing, and some factions can make better use of it for marches than others. Now, one of the fastest ways to improve in this game in terms of combat is reading your battle reports. If you click the mail icon to the right, this is where all your battle reports go. You can see all the information here on troop losses, commander damage dealt, troop damage dealt, damage taken, as well as damage healed. If you click the allied or enemy tab, this information is broken down even further by troop. You can also click the details button here to get a complete round-by-round -round breakdown of what happened during the fight. Did skills go off? Was damage reduced? What rounds did effects begin? All of that and more can be found here, and this is going to be your best friend when trying to figure out effective counters to pesky troop compositions you may face. Okay, so now you understand how to expand using all the tiles around you, you know how to build forts, you've taken distant tiles, but now you've reached your tile limit. This is where tile management comes in. If you look at the top of the screen to the right of your faction symbol, you're going to see your tile count. Click on this and it's going to show your tile breakdown. It shows all the forts that you currently own, all of the crossings, resource tiles, etc. If you scroll down, you can see the lowest tier tiles that you own grouped together here at the bottom. If you click the X to the right of the tile coordinates, you will drop the tile. There is a 30 minute wait for the tile to actually drop in case you need to keep it for some reason. This allows you to easily drop a large amount of tiles if you're planning on pathing to a new area or if you've just gained some levels and are ready to take some higher level tiles. 
Now I know there's a lot of information there to take in, but if you follow these steps, you should have a pretty easy time in your early days. If there were terms used here in the video that you don't understand yet, fear not. I have a top 10 slang terms video coming out next. So if you did find this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks a lot for stopping by and good luck on the battlefield.